So if you have seen any of my videos about the lo-fi vacation module, which I might add is coming along nicely, link in the description below, you would have seen that one of the parts of the module is a sample and hold circuit. You will also have seen the sample and hold I built stopped working before I could do a recording with the completed module. So in this video, I'm going to make a better sample and hold circuit and show how to build it on a breadboard. To start with, this is the sample and hold circuit I use in the Lo-Fi module prototype. It's based on the sample and hold circuit from the, the LM3700 datasheet. Don't use this circuit. It really doesn't work at useful frequencies and is a pain to build. Instead, use this circuit. It works much better, uses fewer parts. You will see similar circuits to this other places on the internet. What makes this one different is the trigger circuit. I don't want a sample and hold with a response like this. I want one with a response like this. And this trigger circuit makes it happen. The circuit takes an input of any length and makes it into a sub-millisecond pulse to pass a new sample to the hold circuit. Otherwise, it works exactly the same as other sample and holds. Signal comes in here. This op amp charges the hold capacitor, but only when this JFET is on. The voltage pulse from the trigger circuit turns it on, and this resistor keeps it off between trigger pulses. The voltage value is held in this capacitor, which is buffered by this op amp here, and output here. Now let's build it. First on the Proto-1 breadboard is some power filtering caps. Next an op amp chip. Let's use a good one, a TL072. You want something with very high input impedance. Now the power connections. And since these are both unity gain followers, the feedback circuit jumpers. The 100K resistor to reference ground on the input. The 682 hold capacitor. The JFET and the diodes and resistors that keep it in a normally off state. the transistors that provide the sample pulse, and the capacitor circuit that shortens the input pulse as much as possible. Now we finish the breadboard connecting the op amps to the JFET. Next, the faceplate is brought in and attached with screws. And the wires to the jacks are attached. First the input. Then the output. Finally, a sample trigger input. The unused wires are folded and neatly connected to, the, to an unused bus. Now after a quick smoke test, we can add it to the rack. Addendum. After trying out this breadboard and it not working, I found I had two mistakes. I missed the plus 12 volt connection to the emitter on the 3906, and I had the connections 
to the collector and emitter on the 3904 swapped. Once I rectified these issues, the breadboard worked perfectly. I know there are some other uses that people have for sample and holds, but I am primarily going to use this circuit for sample rate reduction, which works like this. We take a normal looking signal, like this triangle wave, and we sample it at a high enough frequency to add steps in it like this. The effect is similar to old 8-bit sound generation that had very simple analog to digital converters. At a high sample rate, it sounds almost identical to the input signal, but as we lower the sample rate, the effect becomes more evident. We can go really low for some extra distorted sound. But I think the most useful for me sample rate will be around here. We'll sample and hold. There you go. Well, that's about it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.